Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of Rune News. I'm your host, Ryan Ryan. Once again, same time, same place, every week. It's bloody good to have you here. Last week, we lost Duke Mining as Jagex felt it affected the game's integrity a little bit too much. So this week, they have buffed Shooting Stars, and in typical Jagex fashion, they fucked it. Find out more in this week's episode of Rune News. My name is Ryan Ryan, and you're watching... Rune News. This week's Old School RuneScape update consists of Pole 80 and Shooting Star changes. Now, what does that mean for the community this week? Honestly, nothing right now because they've temporarily uh, blocked mining Shooting Stars as they investigate an issue with them not depleting as intended. Temporarily hotfix with full fix being investigated. Classic Jagex on update week. Now, I will admit I had a six hour nap this afternoon. I've been a sleepy boy, so I haven't been awake for this update. So if someone knows exactly what went wrong with the shooting stars, uh, I would love it if you comment down below what went wrong. I will pin it to the top so you guys that don't know can scroll down, read the first comment under the video, understand, hit the like button on that comment, hit the like button on the video, and subscribe if you haven't already because not only are you here for a good time, but I'm bringing you this S tier content every week. Moving on to the Wilderness Boss Lairs. Now, um, basically, this content is what was voted in through Poll 80. So our first stop is the update train in the wilderness. Players are now unable to teleport out of the wilderness boss caves for three ticks after they enter. Uh, this delay can be avoided if you complete a wilderness hard diary. So if you do your wildy hard diaries, you have no problem. It's mostly just a counter botting. If you have a problem with this, you are a hardcore Iron Man like me, or you are a bot, get your hard diaries done and you no longer have a problem. And the one tick animation delay for everyone entering the dungeon has now been removed, which does make it a little bit easier for PKs, which is fine because PKs have, uh, they're at such a disadvantage in the wilderness right now when it comes to PKing. If you die to a PK, you are doing something wrong. You should be able to survive very easily. Moving forward, wilderness hard diary unlocks. Uh, so to clarify, here are the new bonuses you'll receive with your wildy hard diaries. The Revenant Cave will no longer have a teleport delay, which is massive for PVMers, by the way. So if you do your wildy hard diaries, you're getting away every time. And uh, wilderness boss caves, you'll also have no delay either. So I think as long as you do your wildy hard diaries, which most people should be able to do, you're sweet. Another anti-bot method, which <laughs> kind of fucks me if you understand what goes on in my live streams right here on YouTube, five days a week, no adverts, fuck Twitch, not a cuck. Uh, Wilderness medi Medium Diaries, sorry. Um, yeah, you need to complete those to do Spindel, RTO, and Calvarion. I think that's good for the game, its integrity and longevity, but for those that need context, I'm a hard cry man, and there is a, I've got like a um, incentive system on my live streams when the stream boss hits zero health, we spin a wheel, we pick a wilderness boss, we go kill that wilderness boss for X amount of kills depending on what the second wheel spins. I now need to go do my wilderness medium diaries to even make that wheel practical. So, yeah, that uh, that's gonna make things a little bit spicy. It looks like I'm doing wilderness content soon, boys, so <laughs> hopefully, the, hopefully I don't die. Looking forward to that. Thank you, Jagex. Yeah, yeah. You fucked me on that one. Callisto changes though, which is good. Callisto and RTO should now both take damage from magic attacks from any source, which is awesome. Helps you a little bit with your DPS, which is very nice, especially if you're going to freeze it with uh, Ice Barrage. Additionally, if they are not already frozen and the attacking player has equipped it, has equipment with a total magic accuracy greater than zero, the first attack that would freeze the boss is guaranteed to hit. Excuse me. I don't think I splashed ever on RTO, but Callisto, no, that's, that's handy. Hell yeah. Future hits uh, while the boss is frozen are not guaranteed to hit. Makes sense. Jagex has also augmented the magic defense to compensate for this change. Callisto's base magic level has been raised, which if you use monster to examine, you're probably on the spectrum, or you're just mega curious and want to see it. Just look at the wiki, it's not that difficult. Uh, Callisto's chip damage has been removed, thank fucking god, and his range attack will no longer deal damage through the relevant protection prayer. Easy game. Callisto becomes worth doing for once. If you do everything right in the boss room, you don't really take any damage, which is huge. Blighted Magic Sacks have had an update. I forgot about this, which is awesome. So Bind and Snare Sacks have been converted into Entangle Sacks, and Entangle Sacks can also cast Bind and Snare if the player has the required magic level. The conversion rate is one Entangle Sack is 13 Bind, and one Entangle is three Snares rounded down. So that means if you have 13 Bind Sacks, you get one Entangle, or it, 13 Bind Cast is one Entangle. I don't know what that means, but regardless, uh, that's huge. That just cleans up the bank more than anything, which I'm sure every player will appreciate. Uh, wave sacks have been converted into surge sacks. Surge sacks can also cast wave spells. Perfect. Nothing to complain about. It's, it's just like making everything simple. I think that's awesome. Um, ex existing, although 
Will that be a problem? I guess it's going to move people's spell books around a bit if you're like used to clicking in one spot. Now you're going to have multiple spells lit up. So some people might find that tedious, mostly PKs, but uh, I, I think it's just really convenient. It's something you'll just have to get used to. After a week, you won't even notice. So yeah, give it a week, practice it. You'll be fine. Uh, existing sacks will be converted upon login for all players. Non-Ultimate Ironmans will have the sack sent to the bank and Ultimate Ironmans will have them arrive in their inventory if they have any to convert. Awesome. Sounds good. In other blooded news, blooded food can now be used anywhere in PvP worlds. Non-PvP worlds are unaffected by this change, of course. Repair cost changes. This is mostly for more PKs. Basically, everything is going to be more expensive to convert. Here's your prices here. I'm not going to read them out because I don't give that much of a shit and I'm sure you don't either. But, sorry, I've got to take a breath. Jesus. Basically, these are the new prices, which also means this is what money you get now if you kill someone holding these items below level 20 wilderness because the item gets broken. For example, a Venic Defender, you'd get 300k before this update if you killed someone below level 20 wilderness. They'll keep the Defender, it's just broken. You'll get 300k. Now you get 600k. Banger, which means it costs them more to repair it. So it's a win for everyone involved except those that die. Uh, the Avenic Defender and the Elitist Ward have had their values increased. That way they protect over certain items. Um, and will now only protect to the value of the travel parchment and 500 GP fee, meaning that it won't rank higher than other items as well, uh, like the Berserker Ring. Well, that's for the Event Defender, sorry. And the Elitist Ward will now be, it will have the combined value of the Arcane Sigil and the original Ward, so that way it's worth more than other items, so people don't lose it, because then people are losing their Arcane Sigils and getting very mad. Uh, splash weapons are back, don't care, can't imagine anyone cares, they're shit. Uh, other changes, emptying sacks, pouches, boxes on... Death. Oh, cool. So you guys remember how the rune pouch used to put all your runes in like the top chest when you died and it was just like a pain in the ass to pull it out? Then they fixed it so your runes stay in your pouch the whole time. Same thing goes to herb sack, essence pouches, tackle box, seed box, bolt pouch. If you're... Who the fuck is dying with their tackle box in their inventory? The... Look, <laughs> yeah, sure. Good. You can disable it in the settings if you care that much. Shooting stars! They're fucked. But when they get fixed, uh, they no longer deplete faster than with more people mining them, which means that the uh, Star Miner CC, that pretty much proved for the past two years that communism doesn't work because everyone in there is a spurg. Uh, not anymore. It's good. Now you can just look for Star Miner CC and use it effectively. Someone calls out a star, you go mine it, you're gaming. Easy days. Uh, bug fixes, the warp scepter projectile height has been adjusted to match the scepter, thank god. That's awesome. Did they leave the green mark in though? I hope so. Duke Succulus mining uh, for 5 minute activity time and now restarts if you click the salt again. Okay, that's fine. I can uh, I can live with that. Path of Glothry, last week's quest update. Very good quest, very easy to do. The scepter is confirmed to be 1 in 320, which we kind of made a, you know, educated guess on the wiki already. And the Poison Waste Spirit Tree has been moved to the end of the list. I don't know why they did this, because I mean, some people who use their keyboards to use the spirit trees were a bit annoyed, I'm sure, I get that. But also, this stopped a lot of bot farms periodically for like a, a day. So, maybe the bot farms will be stopped again for another day. Oh well, doesn't matter. I don't care. I barely use the spirit tree anyway. Upcoming poll uh, for September 25th. Um, we'll go through this when it comes out. No one cares. The beta world for mobile, if you want to test it, starts tomorrow. I don't care either, so I won't talk about it. Did, did you watch the Deadman finals? This guy unironically said, oops, hee hee, for his little fucking e-girls, live on the fucking grow up cunt. Anyways, now my mouse is stuck. Hold on. Get that cunt's head off my screen. Um, the PvP rotor has shifted. Oswalds no longer have LMS available to them. And now we will move on to everyone's favorite part of Rune News. Unironically, for those that have been skipping over it, it's a 10 second segment that you're going to regret missing as we talk about the latest update for this week's favorite content, RuneScape 3. It's come to my attention this week that a lot of people are skipping over the RS3 segment for Rune News. And I was under the impression it's my most popular segment. I put a lot of work into the segment. A lot of people give me a lot of really positive feedback about the RuneScape 3 news. So if you're new here, welcome. You've come to the right place. I hope you enjoy it here for RuneScape 3, because this week's update is that RuneScape 3 is fucking dog shit. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Grand Exchange segment. I'm your host, Wade Green. Bloody good to see you here today. The Bowl Supers are on the rise once again. Who could have told you that? Oh, I don't fucking know. Me, last week. Every week going into this year, the Mole Supers are at 665k, and this is an understatement. They're actually at about 875k, 
and rising. The, they're on the rise. We're going to be at 3 mil by the end of the year and looking to beat Primordial Brutes on the Grand Exchange by the end of next year. We're currently sitting here at the top. Anyone that's investing in Mole Slippers right now should be sitting around here. And the triangle just gets bigger and bigger. Nice big pyramid here. So if you want to make money on Mole Slippers, buy them now. They might be 800k each, but I guarantee they are worth the money because they are going to quadruple by the end of the year and they'll be worth 28 plus mil by the end of 2024. Mark my fucking words. My name is Wade Green. Buy your mole slippers today. Become a rich cunt tomorrow. Oh, and then tell your friends to buy them too. That way the, the, the pyramid scheme actually falls into place. Trust me, it's working. Legit, they're, they're worth more than 200k more than this current price right here. This Next week, they're going to shoot up. I guarantee it. Now we have the Awakener's Orb on the dip once again. This isn't even news at this point. This is just general knowledge, so... I just want to keep showcasing that Awakener's Orbs are dropping. If you get them as a drop, sell them, sell them, sell them, because they're just going to keep going. They're going to probably hit 1 mil by the end of the year, maybe less. Mole Slippers are going to be worth more than these soon. And this is for Blood Torva. How does that tell... What does that tell you? Invest. And then finally, we have the Elijah Spirit Shield. Now, the thing about this shield is... It's shit. Why are you buying it? What? Why is it worth so much? You know why? Because people tend to think that the value of their bank and that the opinion of others looking at them going, wow, a large and spirit shield at the Grand Exchange is what makes them get out of bed in the morning. Stop buying the large and spirit shield. It's dog shit. That's all you need to hear. That's all you need to know. My name is Wade Green and I'm a big boy. Now, I'll, I'll be back next week. We got a little bit of cheek this week from Good Day to You All. You guys probably recognize him as he's the most consistent guest in this segment of Rune News. Um, he got a, a light bearer ring and he had a few things to say. Ring or no ring, purple is a purple. I'm happy. Shout out to Elder Mall and the boys that he's been raiding with for an awesome raid session last weekend. Like I give a shit. In before Sit Idiot by Easto. And that's what you fucking get for still playing on Vanilla Client in 2023 by Ryan Ryan. What the the arrogance of a comment like this that my only response to you is Easto has a fucking hot sister in more exciting news one of the OGs of the community tummy hurts also known as Marianne the Tennessee Titan Just got 2k total level and 93 magic at the same time But in great King Condor fashion was talking shit to somebody that either she crashed or that tried to crash her But she crashed him whatever's going on here it's beautiful, I love it, and it's completely what I endorse. So, I, I appreciate it. That's how you know that she's a real one sticking around. Thank you, Tummy Hertz, for not turning HLC like everyone else. And that is it for the Iron Man moments and Rune News this week. Absolutely nothing else special or important to announce. So, I appreciate you all coming by this week to Rune News. My name is Ryan Roan, and Rune News. This is the easiest room in the room. It's quite simple. You got a big boy. Look at him, goddamn! Fuck, mate, look at that boy. It's huge! You got a big boy.